Hmm, interesting. David Wood was born on the 7th of April 1976 in West Virginia. He wasn't dealt the best start in hand in life. His family were poor, dysfunctional, and he grew up in a trailer park in rural Grandall. His mother had a string of abusive boyfriends, with one of David's earliest memories being of him hearing screaming, going to investigate and seeing blood everywhere while his mum told him that it was ketchup and that he should go back to bed. Things weren't all bad though as David would enjoy playing in the nearby rivers and mountains while he was growing up, and also he discovered that he was an empty, emotionless husk of a human being which was handy when he found out that his dog died and he had no feelings about it. This was the moment that David realised he wasn't like other people, and this feeling was was only cemented when one of his school friends passed away and again David felt nothing. As the years passed by he would form a worldview that saw him as the next stage of human evolution, emotions being a relic of the weak human race that had come before him. When David was 8 years old he saw a colony of ants marching in perfect formation and had an epiphany. Ants actually ruled the world and have tricked humans into thinking that they are in charge. This then shifted to pets ruling the world with David thinking that he could communicate with cats and dogs through eye contact. The cats and dogs would mock him that they are more intelligent than humans. He grew out of this idea into thinking that he could control the weather and even was the master of time but just hadn't learned how to use the skill yet. As David turned into a teenager a cascade of hormones flooded his body and anger started to well up inside him. He would commit crimes such as breaking into people's homes and random acts of vandalism. This was liberating for David. He was a dedicated atheist who felt that the world had brainwashed him into following rules that didn't apply to a higher being such as himself so he started to plot his revenge a plan to unshackle himself from the rules imposed upon him to show society that they were wrong and he was right he began to learn how to build homemade explosives with a plan to unleash his retribution on the world but soon realized that this wasn't the worst thing that he could do this wasn't the way to show the world that their rules meant nothing the best way to demonstrate this could be found much closer to home when he was 18 years old david walked into his father father's bedroom on Thanksgiving day and hit him four times with a hammer. Happy Thanksgiving. Having killed his father, David walked outside feeling nothing about the incident. It soon became apparent that David had miscalculated the situation when his father was rushed to hospital and not the morgue. His father survived the attack with serious injuries including brain damage, so David, thinking that his father would soon tell the police, admitted the crime to his mum, who put him in a psychiatric hospital where he was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. This is a disorder that has a spectrum in which psychopathy is on the severe end and it would appear that David falls into this category. He was soon removed from the psychiatric hospital, convicted of malicious wounding and sentenced to 10 years. On a side note, David's dad forgave him and would visit him in prison. When David first got to prison, he was a young atheist, angry of the world that had imposed its rules upon him. After a while, he got talking to a man named Randy who had converted to Christianity and then turned himself in for 21 felonies. David was confused why he would do this and thought that Randy and his God were foolish. David would mock Randy's religion but Randy would bite back and the pair would debate this topic with David losing a lot of these debates which shocked him as he thought that he was the smartest man alive. In an effort to beat Randy David would study Christianity and go back with what he thought were winning arguments only to be defeated once more. Unable to win the debates David would try to win in other ways. Randy started fasting so David tried this in an attempt to beat Randy. He made it 11 days before the prison guards came and took him to a cell with cameras as they thought he was trying to starve himself. David was impressed impressed with Jesus as he thought that Jesus may be the one human that was actually better than him so he converted. David was a new man now. Instead of looking for fights he would break them up and instead of taking the world on alone he had a Christian prison gang to help him out. David's group of Christians would have run-ins with a group of devil worshippers and Wiccan witches. Him and one of his cellmates that he had converted to Christ claimed that some of these Satanists would levitate and become possessed by demons when confronted by them. David claims that the Christian group prayed for help with the leader of the Satanist group as he was becoming a problem and a few hours later a demon appeared to the Satanist telling them to escape which didn't work but they got caught and this broke up the Satanist gang. David first came into contact with Islam in prison. He would work out with a Muslim and the two of them became friends. Being on friendly terms with Islam didn't last long though when one of his Christian friends put up a sign where the inmates queued to get their dinner. The sign said that Islam was not the path to God which upset the Muslims so a group of them confronted 
spotted the Christian in the exercise yard. The Christian took down the sign which upset David so he put up a new sign indicating that Islam was satanic with the hopes that the Muslims would confront him but this never happened. Instead the Muslims snitched on him and the prison authorities removed the sign so David put up a new sign saying that Muslims were snitches. As you can imagine being a snitch in prison is a big no-no so David waited for them to come and get him and defend their honour but instead they snitched on him again and the sign was removed so he went to their Friday prayer meeting to see if they wanted to talk about what was going on but David claims that none of them would talk to him about it and instead snitched on him again at which point he was removed from the prison and moved to another one. Before we continue the story I thought it might be a good idea to meet some of the other players in the game so that the things that we talk about will make sense. First let's meet some of the people that don't like David very much. This is Ali Dawa. Booyakasha, check this out, yo. Oh, sorry, wrong Ali. This is Ali Dawa. And I said to him, you want to do jihad? Yani, you want to do jihad? The only thing that you can do is, if that really happened, yeah, if that ever happened, not your deluded one, if that really happened, you would do tea for us. Yani, you would do tea and drink something. And if the real thing happened, yani, if he was uh, fighting uh, a real enemy, yeah, if there was anything that existed under uh, Amir, yeah, you don't go out there and do it yourself. You'd be doing a cup of tea for us. And you'd be washing my dishes. You'd be washing my Cindy clothes. That's what you'd be doing. He is a British Muslim YouTuber of Kurdish Turkish descent. He is one of the most popular YouTubers who talks on Islamic topics, having over a million subscribers. This is Daniel Hikikachu. Okay, could, a, uh, could a man have a marriage to a five year old consummated if she started precocious puberty? If she starts showing signs of physical maturity, then yes, that's permissible, as I stated. That's what about age four? If there are signs Three. of, so this is something that becomes biologically impossible because precocious puberty, I have a there that are shows no. It goes as early as eleven months. He is a Texan Muslim of Iranian descent and an online debater. He is a follower of the more traditional Salafi interpretation of Islam. He has some pretty interesting ideas on things like child marriage. I'll probably make a video on him at some point as a lot of his ideas are fairly unusual in the modern world. This is Muhammad Hijab. You're nothing boy! You're finished already! Look at me! Well I have a flag that you can replace your flag with. Take this ring of flag you son of a I tell you today you have nothing to offer the world. He is a British Muslim YouTuber of Egyptian descent with nearly 1 million subscribers. He is best known for his interactions with Jordan Peterson, Noam Chomsky and Andrew Tate. He is also known for reportedly instigating violent clashes between Muslims and Hindus in the English town of Leicester and being a leading figure in anti-Israel riots in 2021. This is Mohammed Bin Laden. <laughs> He's not really in this story and I have no idea what his name is, I just found this funny. As you would no doubt guess from the things we will look at later, David has a lot more enemies than this, but these are just the ones that I found interesting and play a part in the story. So now let's meet some of his friends. This is Apostate Prophet. If you're a Muslim, at the end of this video, your trust in both Islamic scholars and your holy book should be heavily shaken. Deep down, they know that eating food is good and that starving to death is wrong. He is an ex-Muslim born in Germany of Turkish descent who now lives in America. He is an atheist who has an anti-Islam channel with over 400,000 subscribers. In a lot of Islamic traditions, the punishment for leaving the religion is death, so apostate prophet is not the most liked person among the online Muslims. Because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt and we're proud of that. Under an emir, it is done, yes. And we, you know what, we'll be watching. This is Robert Spencer. The task before us is very great. We have to uh, resist the Islamic Jihad but above all, we have to destroy the left that is enabling the Islamic Jihad. He is a Christian anti-Islam activist with a website called Jihad Watch and has written many books on the topic. He was banned from entering the UK due to his views. He helped organise a Muhammad drawing contest in Texas in which two armed men showed up and tried to attack him, but police were on the scene and shot both of the attackers. And he also claims that he was poisoned by a young Icelandic leftist who didn't like his views while he was giving a talk in Iceland. Finally, 
finally, this is Hatun Tash. Well, um, my Qurans are stolen from me three times. And last Quran stolen from me was the Quran you gave it to me uh, with the big magical Allah Akbar Quran. While looking up some information about her, I stumbled upon this website. Hatun Tash stands at a well height with good body measurements and also has a fair body weight to match height. Well, thanks. I'm glad we cleared that up. Next. Now, at this moment, Hatun Tash relationship between them remains strong and there are no signs of complications or problems. They also have a mutual love and affection for each other. <laughs> Oh, that sounds lovely. She is an ex-Muslim turned Christian who now lives in Britain but was born in Turkey. She is best known for confronting Muslims in Speaker's Corner and honestly, she's a pretty brave lady. While trying to convert Muslims at Speaker's Corner, she has been punched, arrested, beaten, stabbed, robbed and a man was arrested for plotting to shoot her and she still goes back for more. In case you're unaware of what Speaker's Corner is, it's a pretty historic place for open-air debates in London with people like Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin and George Orwell all having debates there. So now that we've met some of the characters, let's continue the story. David was released from prison after five years and started university studying philosophy. He would get a bachelor's degree and later a doctorate in this subject. While at university, he would meet a young atheist woman who would later become his slightly older Christian wife. Also at university, David would join the speech and debate team where he met Nabil Qureshi. Nabil was a Muslim and the pair would spend hours debating the pros and cons of their religion. Like Randy in prison, David needed to learn more about Islam if he was going to beat Nabil in these debates, so he started studying. The pair became firm friends and would debate the topic for over four and a half years until one day Nabil converted to Christianity. David and Nabil came to the conclusion that Islam was a violent force in the world so became Christian apologists and began to debate Muslims. Their opponents weren't too great at the start. So when you read a verse like this, according to David, which teaches to, to fight against disbelievers, well, Islam looks aggressive, Islam looks violent. And you know, I actually looked up that verse and I'd like to read for it to you. And let me tell you what it really says here. Um, it says, and fight those who believe... Fight those who believe not in Allah in the last day. <laughs> hold on a second, hold on a second. This must be some mistake here. I think this is just a typo, I think. Let, let, me, let me check it out. I actually have a Quran. Let me check it up on my Quran. This, this is obviously a typo. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. Hold on, let me see what it says over here. Uh, let me get my little notes over here. This can't be. It says here, all right. David, it doesn't say that. It says, it says, fight those who... Fight those who believe not in Allah in the last day. Hmm. Well, can we change the topic to what we all have in common? That's actually a much better topic, don't you think? I mean, actually, uh, because we do have a lot in common. Um, with the moderator, would that be okay if we could just change that topic? No. David was confused and disappointed at this stage as he had the idea that Islam was violent but all of his debate opponents seemed nice and were preaching a message of peace but behind the scenes his now best friend Nabil was getting death threats. What was going on? David decided that these Muslim debate opponents must be lying so he decided to turn his attention to more outspoken Muslims but we'll come on to that later. David and Nabil started to appear on Christian media and the pair began to get a bit of a name for themselves in the Christian apologetics world. Some and things of note in this time was David being an outspoken critic of the Park 51 Islamic Centre, otherwise known as the Ground Zero Mosque. This was a centre that was built after the September 11th attack with David claiming there was a symbol of Islamic victory over the West and he claimed the name of the centre was in memory of the Islamic conquest of Spain back in 710 AD. The Islamic centre claimed that the name was meant to evoke the peaceful time of coexistence between Muslims, Christians and Jews that happened in Spain at the time. Also another incident was the time that David got arrested at an Arab festival in Dearborn, Michigan. This is a part of America that has a 30% Islamic population Population. David and his team of Christian missionaries went there in 2008 and had such a fun time that they went back in 2009. This wasn't so fun though with the team being told that they couldn't hand out Christian material at the festival or on the sidewalk outside. David claims that the Muslim security guards would ask Christians to look at their Bibles and when they got them out of their pocket they would throw them out. David and his group were thrown out of the festival and slapped around by the security guards for this. They went back the following year and after a hard day converting they were 
were arrested by Dearborn police for inciting a riot. David was recording the incident and the footage of the arrest shows them talking to a group of young Muslims and everyone seems happy and non-rioting. David painted this as an attack on his rights as an American and proof of the growing power of Islam over the good old US of A. While in jail, the Christians sung hymns and tried to convert the other inmates, which I bet they were super happy about. A load of happy singing Christians doesn't sound great when you're coming down from whatever substance got you locked up in there in the first place. A few years later, David appealed his arrest with courts outside of Dearborn and won. His gang of Christians being awarded $300,000. David had moved to New York with his wife and children, had the light of Jesus in his heart, was making a name for himself in the Christian apologetics world and had a best friend friend to ride life's roller coasters with. Things were looking up for this ex-convict so in 2008 he started a YouTube channel called Acts 17 Apologetics and decided to take on Islam. Sounds like a fun time. David has said that him and the Bill thought that they were signing their own death warrant with this but decided that something had to be done and they were the ones to do it. Bear in mind that this was not long after the Danish cartoon controversy, the assassination of Theo van Gogh for offending Islam, the London bombings and the Madrid bombings. So the threat was real. For most of his channel's life on YouTube, David lived in a small apartment so would need to film each video in his bedroom which he would modify to look like an office. He would do this by putting a bookshelf on his wife's dresser and place a chair in a small gap between the bed and the dresser which is why in his videos he always looks like he's looking sideways. It would take him a long time to set up for each video but David was a man on a mission and in case you hadn't noticed David enjoys conflict, something that he was about to get a lot of. If I were you and I knew the thoughts that go through my head, I would be terrified of me if I were capable of fear. I've got an even more powerful one, Robert. This is uh, Sunan Abu Dawud 203. The Messenger of Allah said, the eyes are the leather strap of the owner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, hey that, that'd be an awesome... You could have an entire roundtable discussion on that. Say, hey, Muhammad said the eyes are the leather strap of the anus. Most of David's YouTube videos are him talking about Islam and pointing out a lot of the weird things to be found in the Islamic religious books. He would also insult Muhammad a lot, which as you can probably guess, didn't go down too well with Muslims. We're about to dive into the dramas, but I guess it's important to understand that Muslims seem to view Muhammad and the Quran with a lot of love. So maybe the best way to understand their reactions is to imagine how you would feel if someone was insulting the person you love most in the world or desecrating a picture of them on the internet. Personally, I wouldn't care and even if I did, I wouldn't show it as David is basically an internet troll, trolling an entire religion and I'm sure if they didn't react, he would stop doing it. These are in no particular order. So firstly, David has drawn Muhammad. When the Charlie Hebdo attack happened in 2015, the mainstream media refused to show the cartoons that sparked the attack and David's channel was one of the only places that you could actually see them. David started a series where he would release short obscure facts about Muhammad every time Muslims did a terrorist attack. So far, we've seen that Muhammad squatted to pee, that he threatened his followers with hell if they didn't squat to pee, and that he warned his followers about Satan peeing in their ears. Muhammad's obsession with pee continues as we turn to his solution for stomach aches. He has a long-standing series called Muhammad's Boom Boom Room where someone dresses as Muhammad and interviews people under the threat of detonating a bomb if he doesn't like their answers. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muhammad's Boom Boom Room where all of my guests either agree with me completely or they go boom. I am your host, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And with me now is a kickboxer, a webcam pimp, the founder of Hustlers University, and the savior of Al-Islam. He is Andrew Tate. Andrew, so nice of you to join me. Thank you for having me, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon you. And may I just say, I am loving your religion. I get to do whatever I want and say whatever I want and no one ever holds me accountable for anything. As you can no doubt guess, David gets a lot of death threats and abusive comments, some of which he reads out. You don't know anything about Islam and 
if could kill you, I would. David, you don't know what is going to happen to you if you fall in my hand. You're censored liar-ying. Just cause this is the internet, you can insult anyone you wish. Pray I don't ever see you ill. Finish you. If I ever see David Wood censored, you best believe you gonna die. You censored, you are paid for speaking. Come out and speak. If you have guts, I will kill you. Hi, Zamir. I'll be speaking next Monday, June 27th at 6.30 p.m. in Winter Springs, Florida, just outside of Orlando. Check my site in a few days for details. You'll have a perfect opportunity to slaughter me there, unless you're just a keyboard jihadist, i.e. a total coward. In the meantime, here's some valuable information about your prophet, most of which your leaders hid from you, to keep you in your present state of complete ignorance. I'll be sharing lots of information like this at the meaning. Video link. Take care. XOXOXOXO. David did try and meet one of these keyboard jihadis, as he calls them, but they didn't turn up. Well, it's noon. That's odd. How am I still alive? So there is a long-standing conflict between the pro and anti-Islam YouTubers, Ali Dawa and Mohammed Hijab being on one side and David Wood and apostate prophet being on the other. These guys have all had heated debates, thrown around insults, and there's just a lot of bad blood between them. It's hard to know where to start with this one as one thing has led to another, but let's start with Mohammed Hijab having a mental breakdown. One day Hijab joined the chat of a live stream that David and apostate prophet were doing telling apostate prophet to get on his knees so that David could give him a golden shower. This moment has been a long-standing source of amusement for David and apostate prophet. Hijab started to send out aggressive tweets saying that apostate prophet's life wasn't worth living and that he should end it. He also offered to fight David. Ali Dawa tweeted for his followers to pray that David gets diseases and illnesses. And Hijab tweeted some vowed threats to their wives. So one day David ate the Quran. And you seem to think that we can't escalate are you serious? I'm an escalator. I'm an, put me in put me in a mall because I'm an escalator, dude. <laughs> that's that's what I do. I just wait. For, I just wait for you guys. But look, my goodness, what is this? Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, look. I don't know if you guys can see this. <laughs> it's a little light there. Oh, look at that, Surat Al Fatiha. You guys oh. see Surat Al Fatiha here? Surat Al Fatiha, man. Yeah, yeah. Good job. You, you, do you really, do you really think, do you really think we can't, we can't escalate? Do you, my good. Do you really think that you want to go this route? You think, oh, he, he made, he made Islamicize me. He made the boom, boom room, dude. I will buy the domain piss on the Quran.com if you keep going down this road. <laughs> and every single thing, every single thing that happens, every single thing that happens, I will say this is because this is this is Muhammad Hijab. He he put he's putting us in this direction. Hey Muhammad, you, you like to you like to spit, right? Puh! There goes Surah Al Fatiha. You wanna keep playing with me, dude? Next time, next time I'll actually swallow the surah and you know where that'll go in two days. You know where that'll be in two days. <laughs> this outraged the online Muslim community and Muhammad Hijab tried to get David's Patreon removed by instructing his followers to report David for hate speech. Well, the call to action here is very straightforward. We're going to go to Patreon, okay? We're going to go to Patreon, we're going to make an account. And then when we make an account, we're going to mass report, yeah, uh, both of their channels. And you can do that because there's a tab that allows you to do that. It is a tab that you go into their uh, David Woods account and Apus's account, as you can see on the screen, and then you put on a uh, report for something that ha happened outside of Patreon. You're going to mention how offended you feel as a Muslim community or whatever with the timestamp, which is also on the screen now, as you can see, of the video of the meeting of the Quran. David used this as a chance to promote his Patreon and his Patreon subscribers spiked up. David then started a new project called Quranagami in which he made an origami pig out of the pages of the Quran. He tried to sell this on eBay but was blocked by eBay as it was an offensive product. He even set up a new YouTube channel dedicated to Quranagami but unfortunately this has now been deleted so I can't see the other stuff that he made. But I seem to remember there was like a pair of shoes in the house I think for some of the other things he made. 
who would also drill holes into the holy book and pretended to see the whole event as some kind of art project. Muhammad Hijab would eventually back down from the conflict stating that his actions were the result of a medication problem. Another notable thing about this story is that his best friend Nabil Qureshi died of stomach cancer and the insults that David would receive began to revolve around this. Claims that he was now in hell and that Allah had struck him down for leaving Islam were commonplace. Also David had five children two of which were born with this condition. This is a serious muscular condition requiring constant care for the two children. David would stay up all night caring for his children but this began to take a toll on him as YouTube can be a very demanding job so he started to make less videos. Things weren't helped when his YouTube channel was demonetized. David thinks he was demonetized because he promoted a rival to YouTube called BitChute. This was a real blow as the family had large outgoings due to the constant care that the children needed. On a side note, one of David's nemesis is Ali Dawa actually made a video offering to help David and his family with money by collecting cash from Muslims to buy a ramp for his kid's wheelchair. I'm unsure if David took him up on this offer. Sadly, one of David's children passed away and as you can probably guess, David would receive insults about this. David has stated that this was not from Muslims and even his bitter Islamic enemies offered him heartfelt condolences at this time. Rather, it was atheists that were the ones insulting his deceased child. To be fair, some Muslims have started to insult him with this as well now. In May 2022, David announced that he would be live streaming himself deleting his YouTube channel. He made this decision because he had grown tired of the continued censorship YouTube would impose upon his channel. I feel your pain there, mate. The date was set and all was going to plan, but a spanner was thrown into the works. Hatoon Tash, the cheeky little rascal, was up to her old tricks again. This time she had gone to Speaker's Corner with a Quran that had been defiled, so she was assaulted with the assailant stealing the Quran, then she was arrested by the police for having an offensive t-shirt on. Welcome to Britain. At the time of her arrest there was a crowd of angry Muslims around her, so this kind of seems like she was arrested for her own protection, maybe? She was later released without charge. David was upset by this incident, so decided to give his channel of over 700 thousand subscribers to Hatoon. He then decided to live stream himself deleting all of his old videos before he handed over the channel. A Christian trying to convert Muslims on the internet doesn't really seem like something I would be interested in as I don't really believe in either of them but I've been following this story on and off for about seven years now and it's pretty wild. Plus I find David Wood pretty funny and entertaining. It's also a pretty interesting aspect of the internet that people from different worlds who would never normally interact confront each other and embark on the struggle for the hearts and minds of the viewers. Regardless of what you think of Islam or Christianity, a large amount of people around the world and throughout human history have believed in these ideas so I would imagine that there's at least some value to them. David Wood is an emotionless psychopath. When his dad died of a heart attack he just thanked the caller who had informed him, went back to bed, went to sleep sleep thinking nothing more of the event and looking at his life story I think I'd rather be around David Wood the Christian and David Wood the atheist. In the west or in particular Britain where I'm from we have a tendency to look down on the religious as brain dead people who just blindly believe anything they are told. Then the next minute we regurgitate some dumb stuff we have no clue about just because the media or some guy on the internet told us it was true. I feel like my life would be better if I was a believer but unfortunately I just can't bring myself to believe in a creator which is annoying. I see religion as the collective wisdom of humanity which has solved problems long forgotten as they were solved so well that we no longer need to care about them. But as religion begins to unravel, these long forgotten problems will manifest into the world more and more. On the flip side, we do live in pretty novel times and maybe the old ideas need to be abandoned so that we can adapt to an uncertain future. Also, religion can be used as an oppressive force in the world, giving those with nefarious intentions the means to enact wickedness on others. But this is true of any ideology, I guess. David says that his attempts to convert Muslims comes from a place of Christian love, which no doubt is partly true, but also David just loves conflict and he's found a way to dress this urge up in a religious costume. David Sharp Wood, I think this is his full name, but I could only find one source for it, has now come back to YouTube with three new channels. I'll leave links in the description to everyone in this video in case you want to fall down the rabbit hole a little further. One of the reasons David first set out on his campaign against Islam was because he thought that they were the biggest threat the world faced. He has now changed his mind on this, saying that big tech are the biggest threat that the world faces, so it'll be interesting to see what plans he has to combat this in the years to come. Let's just hope that he stays away from hammers.
Shout out to the channel members, they are my halal bacon. What's this video about David Icke and bye bye? This is my warning to you, David Wood.